I purchased two very inexpensive parachutes on Timu, and today we're going to see how they perform as recovery parachutes in one of our rockets. Now, normally we make our own parachutes for our rockets, but it does take some time and effort and some good sewing skills to make a really nice fabric parachute. So I thought, well, what if we could just find a really low cost pre-made parachute that just needs some minor modifications to be able to be used in the rocket. So a search on Timu and I found two designs that I really liked. So I bought one of each. Let's go take a look at what we got. Now this first one is a runner's parachute. It's designed to be strapped around a person so that when you run, it deploys behind you offering a little bit of extra resistance. Now this was available in a couple of different sizes. I purchased the one that has a deployed diameter of 48 inches. It seemed to be one of the more common sizes. I also found it in a couple of different colorful versions, but the black one was by far the most popular. It's a synthetic material. It's probably either nylon or polyester. Uh, you'll notice that this parachute does not have shroud lines. Instead, it has this webbing that's stitched into the canopy. And that's because shroud lines have a really bad habit of getting twisted and tangled. And that would be really annoying if you're trying to use this for workout equipment and constantly fighting with the tangling shroud lines. This nylon webbing here doesn't get tangled. So that's actually a really neat idea. And for the shock cord uh, coming out here from the webbing, goes out and it goes to this ring that straps around a person. Now we don't need this ring, so I'm just gonna cut this off, but we will need to extend this shock cord to the proper length to attach inside of our rocket. This parachute costed me around seven US dollars. The second one I purchased is this one here. This is a children's play toy. Now it comes in a variety of different sizes. I purchased the one that is 78 inches in diameter. Now this is a flat parachute, sometimes also called a parachute. It's similar to the ones that we build already for our rockets. It's also a synthetic fabric, either nylon or polyester. And you can see that this one doesn't have any shroud lines. Instead, it just has eight little handles stitched into the canopy around the perimeter for kids to grab onto. So I'll make some shroud lines and I'm just going to attach them to these handles and then I'll also make a shock cord that's the appropriate length to connect into the rocket. This parachute costed me around eight US dollars. Now the rocket we'll be using to test these is one of our four inch eliminator rockets. This weighs about 1300 grams after all the fuel is used. So that will be the weight coming down under the parachute. We'll also weigh each one of those parachutes after we make the modifications. For the runner's parachute, I cut off the belt loop and then I cut a 10 foot length of quarter inch wide nylon strap for the shock cord. I used the sewing machine to attach this new strap onto the one inch wide strap that was already attached to the parachute. For the children's parachute, I cut eight shroud lines, 100 inches each. I used two millimeter paracord and then I removed the center cores from the paracord. That just makes it a little less bulky. I tied each one of these shroud lines to the handles on the parachute using a bowline knot. A bowline knot is a really good strong knot for this particular application. And then I cut a shot cord 175 inches long using 4 millimeter paracord. I put a loop on the end of that using a bowline knot and attached that to the ends of all the shroud lines. Now that the parachute modifications are complete, let's see how much these parachutes weigh. So the runner's parachute comes in at 177.2 grams and the children's parachute weighs 243.7 grams. So they're not too much different. Now the rocket that we're going to be launching these in is our Eliminator 10 rocket. Now this is Eliminator 10 because one through nine have all suffered some terrible fates. But even though we're testing the parachutes today, we're also going to be testing one new feature on the Eliminator rocket. I'm using a thinner fin material, so this rocket should be a little bit more aerodynamic and it's also a little bit lighter weight. So hopefully that'll help with an altitude increase for this rocket as well. If it doesn't hold together, well, then I'll be building Eliminator 11 a little bit sooner than expected. And finally, the motor that we'll be using is our Super Monkey rocket motor. 
This is a PVC case motor filled with flexi fuel sugar fuel. This has been a very dependable motor for us for our eliminator rockets and usually gets this size rocket to around 1,000 to 1,200 feet. So let's go test some parachutes. All right, we're going to test out the children's parachute first because it's the bigger of the two parachutes that we have. And so it should have a slower descent rate, which means there'll be less risk of damage to the rocket when it hits the ground. Now, for today, we're going to be using the Egg Timer Apogee flight computer. Now, this is in charge of two things. First off, when the rocket reaches Apogee, this will fire the ejection charge and eject the nose cone, which will pull out the parachute. This will also provide us with the total altitude for the flight. So once we know the total altitude and we know how long it takes the rocket to get down to the ground, a little quick calculation, we'll be able to see what the average descent rate is for each of these parachutes. So we're gonna get set up and launch a rocket. Three, two, one. I did lose track of it. It's oh, I see it. South of us. I see it. East, southeast, parachute's open. All right, that went fantastic. It actually came down extremely slow. And we do have a light wind today, so unfortunately we had to chase that quite a ways, but it was a great launch and a great recovery. And we don't see any damage to the fins here. So this new fin style seems to be working out great. So next we'll test the runner's parachute. Still got it, I still got it. There we go. Parachutes out. <laughs> 
All right, so another fantastic launch. Um, the parachute performed flawlessly. This one definitely came down a lot faster than the other one. So we're gonna gather everything up here. We'll head back to the shop and we'll take a look at the video we've got and the timings, and we'll see just how fast these parachutes did come down. Now, before we analyze those launches, just a few comments. If you're interested in homemade rockets and rocket launches, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. I'm working on a couple of really neat rocket designs that I know you're gonna like. And if you're still watching the video this far in and you haven't clicked that like button, what are you waiting for? Click that like button, we really appreciate it. And lastly, check out our full line of Rotary Rocketry t-shirts. We've got a lot of really great and funny graphics available. There's a link to the shop down in the description. All right, so the launch with the runner's parachute. That rocket flew to 1,058 feet or 322 meters, and we calculated the descent rate at 12.5 feet per second or 3.8 meters per second. Now that descent rate was a little bit faster than what we normally see for that style rocket because normally we use a five foot diameter parachute and the runner's parachute is only a four foot diameter parachute. But it was a good descent and the rocket didn't take on any damage when it hit the ground. So great launch, great descent with this parachute. And then the launch with the children's parachute. Now that rocket went to 1,174 feet or 358 meters and we calculated the descent rate at 6.7 feet per second, or two meters per second. Now that descent rate was extremely slow, but the nice thing about these flat fabric parachutes, or parachutes, is that you can adjust the size of the canopy by changing the length of the shroud lines. If you simply make the shroud lines shorter, that keeps the canopy from deploying quite as much and you'll have a smaller canopy size, which would increase that descent rate to something maybe a little bit more reasonable. So I think if I was gonna use this parachute again, I would probably decrease the length of the shroud lines by about 30%. Thanks for watching today's video. I had a great time with this one, and I was super happy to see both of these parachutes perform fantastic. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.